Rakuten is the online shopping platform that rewards you for shopping. They are the smartest way to shop and save, with cash back when you shop at thousands of merchants. You can earn cash back at over 3,500 merchants. You can shop merchants in every single category, like fashion, beauty, electronics, dining, and so much more. You can even earn cash back on subscription services and travel. Membership is free and it's super simple to sign up. Once you are signed up and start shopping, Rakuten deposits your cash back directly into your PayPal account, or they can even send you a check. Rakuten already has 15 million members who are saving. It's a no-brainer. Earn cash back while you shop. Start all of your shopping trips at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app and start saving today. This is CBS Eye on the World. Here's John Batchelor. The Great Train Robbery of My Youth Life magazine featured 1963. The train robbed was in Great Britain. And the excitement was there were armed men. It was a gold shipment. They were all caught eventually. And the end of the story is tragedy. However, The Great Train Robbery is reproducing itself right now in an editorial I read in the Wall Street Journal. L.A.'s Railroad Robber Barons. Jesse James was born in the wrong century. Today, robbing trains is easy. This is Pacific Watch, and Jeff Bliss is Pacific Watch. Months ago, Jeff alerted me to this story of plundering going on on the Union Pacific Railroad in and around Los Angeles. However, Jeff, a very good evening to you. You have a precedent out west for a great train robbery. When did this happen before? Good evening to you. Good evening, John. We had the, probably one of the most famous uh, great train robberies, at least in you know cinematic history or out here in the West, was 1899. Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid, and the whole of the wall gang robbed a Union Pacific train. At that time, it was worth about $30,000. Uh, but of course, it gained them a lot of notoriety, and they ended up having a movie made of their life uh, starring Paul Newman and uh, Robert Redford. But it's, it's changed quite a bit. If, instead of approaching trains on horses or trying to slow them with uh, you know, all kinds of log jams, things like that. Uh, what they have now are trains parked in the downtown L.A. area, and they're being hit by gangs of organized criminals who are taking them for millions. Now, Jeff, I do not know downtown Los Angeles except for, oh, for example, them, you know, the famous movie of the giant ants that hide in the uh, waterways underneath Los Angeles. Where are these yards? I've only ever driven out from downtown out to Hollywood. Are these yards near downtown or are they another part of town? They are near the downtown area, but where the trains are being hit now are these corridors, essentially, that run to the train yards. The train yards are much easier to keep an eye on, generally speaking. But what's happening is as the trains come into uh, the downtown area from, say, the ports of L.A. or ports of Long Beach carrying these containers, uh, they are either stopped by traffic or slowed or even stopped by the thieves who get on board and pull the handbrakes. And then they go to town. So you have these these corridors uh, that are in, in L.A. They, they're down below their sub uh, below the, the road. So you can't really see them that well for the roads. And the gangs move in there. They open the, the freight cars and they take out whatever they want. Like I said, they've taken out millions. They're hitting about 90 freight cars a day. And this is a very organized, very sophisticated operation. What does it look like, Jeff? These these are containers and the Union Pacific is hauling them. Are there not guards? Are these boxes not sealed or in some fashion making it difficult for thieves? There are no guards on the train. As a matter of fact, Union Pacific has recently pulled in some extra help uh, with their detectives or their their railroad police, but that's only five people. So uh, the the coverage of this has been spotty. It's usually we find out about it after the fact. But what happens is as the trains are sitting there on spurs or on the the rail lines, uh, the thieves come up. They are able to open the the rail cars very easily. All it takes is a lock bolt cutter. And then they, their gangs come in and they move the packages out. And sometimes it's they know what they're looking for. They already know ahead of time which cars have the big screen TVs and uh, luxury brand items, those types of things. on. Or sometimes they just hit them randomly and just start pulling things out. So what happens is if you if you haven't seen the photos of these, of these rail lines where the cars have been waiting, where they've been hit by thieves, you have piles and piles and piles 
of cardboard boxes and other trash strewn across the area. It almost looks like it looks like less of a rail line and more of a, a landfill. There's so much trash, sometimes four or five feet t- high all around the trains. The first you brought this to my attention, I didn't believe it, Jeff, was last fall, I think before Thanksgiving. And Union Pacific is now saying 90 containers on average are getting hit each day. Has this been going on for, uh, since last fall and we're just learning about it now? Or is there is this some sort of spike in activity? It's probably been going on since at least last summer. It's been spiking up because you have some other people who aren't necessarily part of these gangs who are trying to take advantage of it. Sometimes they're scavengers walking along the tracks, picking up very expensive items. And sometimes they're trying to, you know, jump in the action as well. But when I talked to people from Union Pacific that I know uh, last fall, they had indicated this has been happening for some time. They had even shared photos with me of it happening and said they just couldn't get any help. Uh, you know, they reached out to L.A. law enforcement. They weren't getting enough help and they weren't getting any attention from the news media. I know I shared this with the local news media in L.A. They really weren't interested at the time. Jeff, you have a district attorney, George Gascon, who has gained national attention because of his creative and opinions of who to prosecute and who is not to prosecute. Has he said anything definitive about these thefts, this plundering? Because it suggests that this is beyond the broken window syndrome. This is the broken train syndrome. There really hasn't been much of note from Gascon on this. We did hear from uh, Governor Newsom, who uh, originally pointed out, said, look, this has got to stop. This doesn't feel like, you know, this feels like we're in a developing a nation and we're not in a first world country. And at one point, he even, he even said this is about an organized crime operation. And so, you know, that's been about the most of it. Of course, the local police now have really stepped up their operations and talk about it more and more. But we really haven't heard a lot from George Gascon, which has people very angry. One more, you know, stick on the fire when it comes to people being angry with Gascon. And the trains continue to roll. Union Pacific has no choice. Is that correct? That's correct. That You know, otherwise everything will be piling up in the ports or at the airport. They just have to keep on moving and do their best. You know, part of it is, uh, you know, they're hoping that the more they can push through, the bigger volume they'll be able to deliver. They'll be able to deal with some of the loss. But the truth is, this is getting worse. Other news, and you mentioned the governor right now, Jeff, and this is a period where we're all anticipating trouble around the world and inflation, et cetera. So I want some good news. Now, we've been talking for weeks now about the snowpack growing in the northern parts of California, and this being a possible relief for the aquifer come summer. There's also rain in other parts of the West. Is the opinion that La Nina has broken the drought or is it too early still, Jeff? The feeling is, is it's too early still. There's a lot of hope. A lot of people believe that it has, but the experts are holding back saying, let's wait and see. We still have a few more months. If it continues like this and we'll surely break the drought and we'll be, we'll be okay. We'll be able to ease water restrictions. But you have a number of, of locations throughout California and the West saying it's too early to give up on the water restrictions. As a matter of fact, uh, the water district that serves Calabasas and Malibu and some of those areas of L.A. Uh, said today they're going to continue on with their water restrictions. And finally, Jeff, when we come to thinking of California, we think of empty shelves, the ones we're seeing here. We think of missing store clerks. We think of drivers who are not making their regular deliveries because of Omicron. Is that happening in Los Angeles as well? We see it here in the East. It very much is. Uh, I have a relative who works in the uh, grocery business, and uh, they talk about these these empty shelves and the the number of people that are reporting to work all the time. This is a big problem. And, you know, the biggest problem, though, is the first one you pointed out, and that's the supplies. There's a real dent and there's a fear that there's, there's more to come. In other words, it'll be worse. Uh, down the road. Is there a a talk of hoarding, anything like that, paper products, the way we saw in the early days of the virus? Nobody's really talking about that. You don't have the restricted number of times you can go into a store anymore. And about as restricted as it gets is, you know, wearing masks in a store. Other than that, people just kind of going along to get along. But there is there is a spoken fear among shoppers and people who run stores saying, Things don't look good, and we feel like it's getting worse. Jeff Bliss is Pacific Watch, and the great train robbery, uh, according to Jeff's reports for months now, has been well known to people who live there. Uh, I believe that I I didn't face it 
finally, until I saw it in the Wall Street Journal. And then I contacted Jeff and said, you've been telling me this for months. This is CBS Eye on the World. I'm John Nash. If you're struggling with alcohol or drugs, Recovery Centers of America can help. The holidays are over, the new year is here, and the time to act is now. Expert private care at Recovery Centers of America will get you on the road to recovery today. At our award-winning and fully accredited treatment centers on the Eastern Shore and in Southern Maryland, you will be treated with compassion, dignity, and respect by our dedicated team of professionals. You will also benefit from specialized programs, 24-hour medical care, and the comfort of our outstanding facilities. Let us help you. We will answer your call 24-7 and can get you into treatment as soon as today. If outpatient care is right for you, you can receive a same-day assessment and attend therapy in person or virtually. And because we accept most private insurance plans, you get premium care without the premium price. Don't wait. Start your new year. Start your new life today. Call 1-888-RECOVERY now. That's 1-888-RECOVERY. Family. It looks a little different for everyone. For some, it's mom and dad. For others, roommates who feel like family. And for others, it's your significant other, their golfing buddies, your children, a high school soccer team starting lineup, and oh look, they're all taking you up on the offer to stay for dinner, really testing the limits of that phrase, the more the merrier. But no matter where you call home, GEICO makes it easy to bundle and save on home and car insurance. Easier than making three frozen pizzas and assorted frozen veggies into a cohesive meal. 